hello from Calcutta, India. Known as the city of joy, this is the third largest metropolis in the world's most populated country. It's my fourth proper visit to India, having flown from Dakar in Bangladesh. In this video, I'm going to share my first day walking around the streets and general impressions near where I'm staying in a hostel in the city center. Now the cool thing about this city, especially here in the center, is all the old buildings from the 19th century and early 20th century built as part of the city being the capital under British colonial India. Many still being used today having had very little done to them. In fact, many of them are kind of just crumbling. Beautiful old yellow building here. Beneath it, one of the iconic yellow taxis. And yet at the same time with these grand buildings, it's a very kind of local area. Kolkata actually has quite a history with communism and so during the later stages of the 20th century and early 21st century, I think until about 2011, the Communist Party ruled the city for 30 something years and so many people were given the rent to these old grand buildings for just like a few hundred rupees from what I've read. You can see here this building says Communist Party of India, Marxist in brackets. Sat Yejit Ray frequented the coffee house, which is down here, one I'm heading to. Tagore as well, a writer who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, was also from Kolkata. And that's why it gets the name the City of Joy, because of its history, its literature, its arts, its food. So this area around the university here is full of hole-in-the-wall booksellers. Eighteen eighty-six, one hundred and thirty-eight years running. So right here is the Indian coffee house, the famous intellectual hub where many academic minds have come to meet and discuss all things about society over the years. Here we are. Whoa. Old world charm, the waiters dressed up all in white, and portraits on the walls, high ceiling of a hall. All right, so I've now sat down and found myself a spot here. And I've got some food. Chicken chow mein, hacker style and fish fry, which is a big feature of food in Bengal and Kolkata, and the special coffee. 
This was originally built in 1876. It was called Albert Hall. And then in 1942, the coffee board turned it into a coffee house. And as I said, many conversations by famous locals have taken place here over the years. It still retains a great atmosphere today. Cool place to come if you want that local feeling, if you like me and you like this kind of thing when you travel. The special coffee here is really sweet and milky and I can see why it's special. Just finished my coffee there which was so good. And this is the view from the second floor here. Pretty cool, let's head back out now and go to New Market which is the biggest market in Kolkata. So I've just taken a taxi to the new market area here. Grand old building and then lots of street stalls with clothes and things right in the heart of where the old city center used to be. Fresh sugar cane. And the evening atmosphere. I honestly don't remember a great deal of Kolkata, this is my second time in the city. I was first here in 2019. And I actually filmed three vlogs here. <laughs> and then I lost my camera and lost the footage for all three of my vlogs. So the story goes that I left my camera in the back of a taxi. A second after I got out of the car and the driver was already going off. And then I tried to call his number through Uber and he wouldn't pick up the phone. Then I went to a hotel just nearby and gave my phone to a woman working on the reception who called him and spoke to the driver on the phone. And then he said, I don't have his camera. And then the woman working at the hotel said, He's lying to me and he's lying to us. He has your camera, he just doesn't want to give it back. And I said, tell him that I will pay him anything, like even 20 pounds, if he comes back right now and gives me my camera, that's more than any taxi journey he yeah, will uh, yeah, take. And he kept saying, no, I don't have his camera. And then in the end, I went to the police station, reported it, but nothing happened. And on my camera, I have my memory card with all three videos of Kolkata that I filmed, which was first impressions, Kolkata tour, and I was in the middle of filming a Kolkata street food video as well. So I told that story a few years ago when it happened, but I'm just repeating it there for those who didn't see. Wow. So saying that I don't remember much, this is one area I do remember. This old red building here reminds me a little bit of St Pancras Station, which is my local train station whenever I take the train into London. King's Cross St Pancras is where I always get off. As I walk around here, one thing I want to bring up, a little gripe I have, if you don't mind, is the airport. In the Kolkata airport when arriving, there was no Wi-Fi and also no ATMs. Only currency exchange offices that are really scam 
money, they're giving terrible rates. Um, like if you say, want to exchange 50 pounds worth of money, two rupees, you'll only get about 4,000 rupees, about 40 pounds. So they take about 10 pounds off from 50 pounds. So you can't withdraw money and there's no Wi-Fi and nowhere to buy a SIM card, which is a pretty bad combination. Thankfully, there is an Uber stand immediately outside the airport. And so I asked a guy there if he could hotspot me, which he did. I used his hotspot to call an Uber to my hostel and I arrived and all was fine from there. I asked the taxi driver to stop at an ATM along the way too, which worked out okay with threw my money so it all was fine and i got a sim card as well from vodafone so in the end it all worked out but if the airport just had wi-fi and atms it would make everything so much easier I think this area epitomizes Kolkata in a nutshell. Old, beautiful buildings and underneath are massive markets and life and Indian street culture, you could say. And then the skeleton of old buildings like this just kind of crumbling away. Relics of the past and a reminder of a previous bygone era. So I don't think I need to show too much more of this market area. You kind of get the idea. It's very busy here. So I will just walk on a little bit. Different snacks here. from the market area. I am approaching Park Street. This is a historic street of the city with many modern chains and a different side to the city. Coffee shops and Momo chains. Momos are popular dumplings in this part of India. Books on sale on the street at uh, discount prices. Good morning, welcome back to Kolkata. I have come to the Sharma Tea House in the south here for breakfast. And I have Alu Shobji potato vegetable curry with puri. The puri is soft but also crunchy. Potato curry, medium spicy, but nice kick to it, really flavoursome. This is the special kasar chai of this place he is preparing. Wow, bits of saffron on the top. A way to make and present chai and a perfect way to finish off breakfast here in the morning. So after taking an Uber I'm now here outside Kaligat Mandir, Kolkata's holiest spot for Hindus. I'm gonna give my shoes in and head inside. Quite an atmosphere inside the grounds of the temple here. You 
can see here the queue to go inside is quite long. It goes all the way around and Kolkata got its name from a temple on this exact site called Kali Kata, named after the goddess Kali. So having just come out of the temple grounds there, I couldn't film so much inside. You can see I have a bindi on my head. There was a very long queue to enter the main chamber and see the goddess Kali in black in the center there. However, of course, there was some guys there who, for a fee, would let you skip the queue and see her for yourself, which I did. I paid one guy 200 rupees to skip the queue and take me to see Kali with my own eyes. I couldn't obviously film that inside the temple, but it was worth it. Um, when I got to the front, they wanted me to make a donation. They asked for 500, I gave 100. And then the guy who I paid 200 rupees to took me to another smaller shrine, which I got talking to an older man who made some prayers for me and my family. And then he asked me for 2000 uh, rupees to donate sacks of rice to the children. I hope it does go to them. I didn't want to pay 2000. I thought it was a bit heavy. 20 pounds is a lot for India. And they use the religion to kind of guilt trip you a little bit, especially if you're a foreigner. So in the end, I gave him 500 and I just said, look, here's 500, that's five pounds. That's a lot more than most people will give you. I hope this goes to the temple and helps support the children, etc., and not to anyone's pocket. And he said, no, no, sir, it will go to the temple. I said, good, good. And um, well, hopefully it does. So just be prepared if you go in there, you'll have to part with some rupees. Um, to get inside the temple if it's busy and most likely they will ask you for donations at various points uh, which is fine you can give donations so i found a sweet shop here to take refuge from the sun and i have the main suite of Kolkata and west bengal which is a roshagula sweet white juicy ball tastes pretty much the same as it does on the other side of the border in Bangladesh. It seems to be a famous Bengali sweet. Sweet ball of diabetes. As I've said a few times in previous videos, the Rosh